Hey, Scott from Aristocop.com here. And Seth from MyWienerYourMouth.com. Truth. And we're sitting in Boy's backyard. Um, you probably hear the air conditioner and you'll probably see the sunset while we're out here uh, because it's actually nighttime. And it's, it's really nice. Um, the last Good time change. we were here at this table, we were inside of a tent <laughs> that collapsed with the first snowstorm of the season. It was my backyard back then. That's right. We, we've moved to another home, and uh, Boy and his family have moved into our old home. So yep. we all moved one seat to the left, and music <laughs> stopped, and here we are. Anyway, uh, welcome once again. We're going we're gonna to get to smoking, and um, I really debated something about this. All this right. is a Solani Green Label, which says it's a Virginia Black Cavendish and Sweet Apple Flavoring. Mm -hmm. I avoid cherry and apple and those fruit flavors because that casing can be so strong Chocolate. that flavoring can be so strong and yeah. i read some reviews about this that said it got better after they left the tin open for a day okay and i debated opening this and letting it sit and i thought no that's not how we roll <laughs> okay we open things on on camera and uh we we taste right. them as they come i don't have mine out of my pocket so i'll let you do it This is not the right knife we hear for that? this. Oh, but it got the job done. All right. Hmm. Yeah. That's it's a strong casing on it. Oh wow! Look at look at the oils in that that wrapper. How old is this tin? Oily, oily lid here. Let me see. Does that have a date on it? Not here. It doesn't. High Point, North Carolina. Bonjour. Mm -hmm. High Point, North Carolina. That's huh. interesting. So who who imports this? Who's local? Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and smoke this in a uh, naked country gentleman. So one of the things we thought we'd talk about today, um, I'm assuming by now, if, if you're actively viewing videos, on YouTube, uh, you've probably seen that Mutton Chop Piper, Chris, um, posted a video earlier this week talking a little bit about what he's dealing with with his computer slowly but surely dying. And what's come out of that is kind of a, um, a grassroots effort to give him the support that he needs to buy a new computer. Uh, his mom is ill and uh, her, her, the money that she gets in, in retirement isn't really even enough to pay her bills. And so he's having to, to make up the difference of that. And he has a 10-year-old computer that's slowly dying. And his video was to talk about, um, hey, just to be prepared if I suddenly disappear, that's the reason why I've disappeared. Um, no no uh, other reason. And, um, you know, it's funny because Boy and I were talking about do we talk about crowdfunding again? I don't think we do. I think we've beaten that that horse to death. Um, but I, I did want to put in a plug and say if you value uh, Chris's channel and, and gotten something from that, uh, GoFundMe will take a dollar. And uh, if, if enough of us give a dollar, it actually will, will mean something. And uh, you can find the link to his video in the description below. And uh, we'll also put the link to the GoFundMe account where you can contribute. All right? So that's all we'll say about that. I'm going to light this up. Say something, boy. <laughs> um, so we certainly understand. Uh, I'm going to say something else. Um, you know, I, we, we record our videos usually on a camcorder and edit on a computer. And, yeah, having a, a computer that can run everything is really, really swell and makes the whole editing process a whole lot easier um, but to those of you who may think that that's the only road to um, having a youtube channel making videos to being a part of the, the ongoing conversation within the community um, most of us have cell phones in our pockets that are capable of recording video if not tablets are an option they are they're really cheap now even old cell phones with a wi-fi connection can can do that and through things like the, the YouTube app or iMovie or some of the others, it's really easy to make high quality, high quality yeah. videos um, 
to be a part of of the ongoing all, YouTube community. All of the videos on the Aristocob channel for the last probably five years have been filmed with an iPhone and on rare occasion I'll edit it with an app on my phone. I can I can use iMovie. Um, I also downloaded a free one a while back called whatever it's called Video Shop I think that uh, has a few other features that if I need to I'll, I'll use it but mostly all I'm doing is trimming off dead air right at the tail end. Yeah it's called Video Shop and then right from the YouTube app you can upload the video. In fact you can, you can, do, you can do live recordings mm -hmm. straight from your phone through the app. Yep. Um, not to mention you've also got that av uh, available to you on a number of social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram now. Instagram now, yeah, Instagram TV. Um, so don't, I'm with you on this one, don't think you have to have an elaborate camera, elaborate lighting and sound. All those things are wonderful and we all appreciate it when that happens. Yeah. But, you know, we're just buds hanging out smoking pipes together. I, I think we can put up with a little bit of noise and some bad lighting. Yeah, and I, I appreciated, I appreciated his his perspective. That and I, I think it came across more in some of the comments that, hey, look, YouTube is a hobby that I love, but uh, if it comes to getting something for YouTube or paying for my mother, uh, it's an easy decision to make. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and he wasn't begging. Uh, he was just sharing the facts and letting folks know. And like I said, it was really very much a grassroots effort. Folks wanting to support him said, let's set up a GoFundMe campaign. In fact, there were several of them set up, <laughs> almost instantaneous. And, uh, and then finally somebody reached out to Chris, or one of them had reached out to Chris to make sure that that was okay. Yeah. And they kind of chose one as the official uh, campaign. As of this recording, there's $590, something like that. So be be curious to see where that winds up. Um, he set set the goal, or, or the, whoever created that set the goal really high, because his ideal option would be to get a brand new computer with warranties, with all the video cards and memory and everything that you need when you're working with with video. Doing that kind of video production can eat up a computer's memory really fast. And I suspect he has other needs for a computer. His computer's 10 years old. And uh, he also described that it, you know, the fan is constantly running. Man, were we there. We, we had a PC that I know was running all kinds of viruses and things. And uh, it was constantly running. So, yeah. Where, where, what sites were you visiting, son? Oh, all of the uh, Flash video game sites. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Homestar Runner. Mm, that's right. Oh, uh, before I forget, somebody in the comments, sorry for uh, not remembering who offhand, asked about uh, a 3D printer update. Um, I have still have no update to give because it's still not working. Um, I've gone through the, the process of replacing several parts, which is frustrating on something like this because every part you replace it has to be ordered and so you get one thing working and that makes something else break and so it's another three to five days waiting for that piece um and so everything is working to my understanding and i'm still having a hard time getting it to print there's some sort of issue with the bed not being level and so i've got a coworker who um, lives, eats, and breathes 3D printers. And uh, he's offered to come over on a Saturday and help me get everything back up and running. So uh, hopefully I will have an update soon. When it worked, it was great. When it worked, it was great. It was printing uh, minifigures for my D&D game. Uh, it was excellent. And then, um, but as soon as it went downhill, I just don't have the electrical or small mechanical knowledge or aptitude to, to get it to to function all together. All right, so I gotta say, this is moist, and, and this is another reason why I wish I had opened it up for a day. It's struggling a little bit to keep it burning, okay. and it's not a good combination to have something that's very moist and with a heavy casing to have to, to freight train it to keep it lit. Right. Uh, it's just inviting right. tongue bite. 
And so I'm going to need to slow this cadence down. It doesn't taste bad by any means, but uh, so should we should we pull some of this out and and kind of let it aerate? Yeah, well, for the out of out of the, the future, <laughs> and and maybe by the end of the evening, come back to it, or just save it for another time. I have more tins here to open up. All right. <laughs> well, nice brag thing. about it. So, so speaking of going to JRs, yeah. Went to JR Cigars, which is uh, over in Burlington, North Carolina, probably about 30 miles or so from our new home. And uh, they've got a great walk-in humidor, and they, they claim to have the largest humidor in the world, which is their warehouse, not their actually walk-in, actual walk-in humidor. But that's, that's the biggest walk-in humidor I've ever been into. You know, I still haven't been out there since they've become... Tobacco only? Like, yeah, only. Oh, ah, okay. Has their humidor grown? Mm, it it's grown quite a bit into the old pipe area, so okay. a lot more cigars encroaching on the pipes. The pipes have very much been minimalized, mm. minimized. Um, a but, lot to begin but with. Jackie was there, mm. and so I got to talk to Jackie. Jackie's one of the in-house experts. Um, we took a class from her on cigar smoking. It was really informative. It's one of those people that has been around, a, 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 almost almost a, a mythical <laughs> creature. Creature, yeah. That that she's there always, and her knowledge is an incredible. She is a cigar smoker um, through never and through. without a cigar. She's Not always ever. got a cigar. Talks about having freezers at home filled yeah, with them. Ice, ice chests. She's converted into. Uh, into humidors. Into humidors. So anyway, I spoke with her uh, about so, some project that Boy and I were looking to do, and uh, she, she kind of gave us a bit of a setback. I haven't filled you in on this yet, mm -mm. but I, I do have some news. Um, and their pipe tobacco selection has really dropped off. Mm. And that's sad because, again, part of the FDA deeming has required that all of their blends now have to be disclosed as to who they are manufactured by. And so suddenly, Brendan's choice is known to the world as Lane One Q, and uh, so that that kind of puts a hurt on them for what they, you know, the market has, saw as a unique house blend, and it's not a unique house blend. Right. And uh, many fewer tins than is the norm. But I, I had not had the Salani, and I have another tobacco that we'll smoke uh, here in a bit. That'll be next week's episode that I've never had either. But one thing that they do have, they have an abundance of cigar boxes and their cigar boxes are available for purchase. And it's kind of cool because they run they run the gamut from just cheap, cheap cardboard boxes to some that are really absolutely nice. gorgeous and just short of a humidor actually. Yeah. Um, almost all of their cigar boxes are two bucks a piece and their their finer ones are i think 595 or something like that and uh, so i went ahead and picked up a couple cigar boxes for my own use for some storage things i want to do but check this out it's got a felt bottom on it it is made from uh from spanish cedar so it's lined with spanish cedar and it has if you know anything about cigar boxes it has a quadrant hinge so cigar humidors typically have this. Usually what you'll see at best is a little butt hinge, and in most cases they'll have just a nail that it's pivoting on right. because in a shop environment it gets open one time, sold out, and away you go. That is such a high quality box, um, and it was $2. Wow. I couldn't make that for two bucks. And uh, I, I walked around, looked at all their, their boxes, and uh, looked at some of the $6 ones and was tempted by them. But instead, I just bought a bunch of these identical sized boxes and... Uh, ah. What are you going to use them for? Just storage of smalls. Um, I've got a bunch of pocket knives and Zippo lighters and things like that that are just kind of beaten around. And I've decided I want to slowly but surely start corralling those together mm -hmm. so I can at least see what I have and, and maybe start dispensing that out to some Ooh. family and friends once I know what I have. You, uh, if you really want to do it right, you should put some Kaizen foam in there and have cutouts for your. Well, maybe once I, I find the, one. 
yeah, find the pristine ones or the ones I really treasure. Right. So anyway, yeah, it reminds me, my, my father-in-law was a pipe smoker and in his shop, he had tons of these little um, Prince Albert tins and he had cans of Captain Black and Prince Albert that he, he stored all these nuts and bolts and things like yeah. that in. And, um, but he also had a bunch of cigar boxes and he had wrapped them in, in yellow construction paper and then had written on them with something, I think a grease pencil, that he was able to erase if need be. And uh, he had one cabinet, you'd open it up and there were all these orange cigar boxes, I'm sorry, yellow cigar boxes stacked and one of them said uh, electrical and one of them said mm. solder and so on and you take these things down and take them to wherever you were working in the garage or in the house and uh, very very well organized and uh, it just made a lot of sense we have plastic containers these yeah. days but you know the frugality of that generation and in, in making do with what they had and not throwing stuff away so readily mm -hmm. I, I envy that and so mm -hmm. Nice that these are going to get some use. I don't yeah. know. You, do you use cigar the, boxes for anything? The idea of of buying an empty box. <laughs> I know. When you have empty boxes laying around, I have one or two. Um, I've I've used a couple. I used one a year, I guess two years ago to make a gift. A lamp. Yep. Yeah. Made a lamp out of a cigar box, which is kind of cool. Um, used an Edison bulb and had a switch. That was a fun project. A very, that was very cool. It was very uh, steampunk. Yep. It was a great design. It had uh, chalk chalk paint on it so it could um, notes could be left on it. Uh, so I made that and then I have one or two that I have odds and ends sitting in. I used to have one by the door um, at the apartment but I, I don't now. I don't know, but one of one of my goals for the near future is to organize some of my stuff in the garage. Right, right now, my um, my like dumping ground for pocket stuff is one of the drawers in the kitchen, and uh, it gets gunked up with all sorts of other odds and ends. It's a junk drawer, right? Yeah, and so I'd, I'd rather rather move it someplace that's mine and mine alone. Yeah. Well, you end up getting things like utility knives and button cell batteries and right. stuff that you really don't need the little ones getting a hold of. So that's a good good place to hide stuff. Yeah, so I just recently used one of those plastic, big plastic bins for batteries. I sectioned it off and have sections for different battery types. And that's been incredibly useful, having them all in one container and then also having them just broken out so you know Using exactly. the one that we got at uh, Home Depot? Yeah. Yeah, those are, those are great. Yeah, so I've got, at one point in time, I had bought a hundred pack of button cell batteries online because Ender was playing with the toy that used them and he always left it on. And so those were like individually packaged. Um, they were packaged in strips. And, uh, hang on. Uh, <laughs> trying to get the, uh, get this thing to, to, to look more better. What are you doing? It's not, it's not gonna work. No, nope. it's, it's getting awfully dark out here, boy. Yeah. All right, we'll get some lights for, for the next one. But um, do, you have, do you have an opinion on this tobacco? That's okay. It, I mean, it is it's okay. Sweet. It really needs to be dried out. No yeah. question about it. And um, I, I suppose if you like apple tobacco, you'd probably like this. Right. It it it's not that cloyingly sweet green Granny Smith tobacco flavor that uh, I'm used to from from uh, apple flavored tobacco um, but man we're gonna leave that tin open in my van for a couple days yeah yeah that might improve it can't hurt it all right so like I said checking the doobly-doo for information about uh, mutton chop piper you, tell us in the comments below do you use uh, cigar boxes for anything or any other really interesting containers that you're you're redeeming for a new use I love that idea I, I really do I, lo I love that uh, upcycling and recycling mm -hmm. of interesting containers so see that a lot with uh, baby food and yeah yeah glass glass jars tell us all about it 
Oh, what? One last thing. Uh, on this topic, there's a jam company. My coworker has uh, had this jam. He makes his own sandwiches at lunch. And the container looks so cool. It's glass. It's got a kind of a patterned or textured very bottom and then comes up um, to a bit of a point, flares out, and then comes straight up and it's got a, a snap on lid. I said, that is so cool. He said, yeah, it's cool, isn't it? I started looking at it. They, on their packaging, mention upcycling. You empty it out and can use it as a glass. A drinking glass. A drinking glass. And, cool. and that, that's how they intended it to be designed. He had never noticed it. Another coworker, he and another coworker had talked about how cool it was and how interesting it was, but had never noticed that part of the packaging. It was really neat. When I was a kid, juice was kind of a premium. Uh, any kind of juice from uh, fruit juices to even tomato juice. And people would drink it in small little cups. It wasn't something mm. that you would you know, fill a big glass with. And so almost all of your jam and jelly companies had glasses or jars that were intended to be used as juice glasses. Oh, that's smart. So we, we had a whole set of glass juice containers. And the lids were snapped on. They didn't screw on. So you yeah. popped yeah. the lid off, and then that way you didn't have that. A ring. Yeah. That's exactly how this one was made. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Dude, everything old is new again. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to wrap this up. Thanks for joining us this week, and uh, make it a great week. See ya.